So, Peter Dinklage has chosen to put the jobs of his fellow dwarf actors at risk for his own hubris, of course, which seems to be a great display of his short temper for these kinds of things. Are we going to just do short jokes the entire time? Of course we are. Right. Of course we are. So, um, recently, uh, if you go to the first link I've got here, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, We can see here that Peter Dinklage has recently been making some damning comments about Disney's decision to do a remake of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves classic. 1937, I think it was, film, which was the start of their current animated empire uh, because of the fact that it includes dwarves in it. As we all know, Disney have been remaking a lot. What? What's wrong with including dwarves? Well, it's like, not- Even if it's not the seven dwarves for a minute, like, you're, you're a dwarf, mate. Like, Mr. Dinklage is. Well, yes, well, he's not seeing it as that. He's, he's not seeing as these people being represented as people. He's seeing them being represented as magical little forest creatures, which, yeah, kind of... I mean, but, if the story calls for it. Yeah, but if the, yeah, that's how dwarves have classically been depicted in fantasy for a very long time. But, yeah, just to carry on, so, yeah, Disney have been remaking a load of their classic animations in live action, or li- as live action you can be as when you're still using CGI as a massive crutch. Uh, the whole thing seems like a pointless exercise, but it is giving people jobs, it's getting people things to do, but Dinklage was not very happy about it. So he said here uh, that this says, uh, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs get a live action remake. Disney announced that West Side Story actress Rachel Zegler will star as the princess in the remake of the 1937 animated film. Gal Gadot will play the evil queen. And Dinklage thinks the story shouldn't be uh, remade at all if it's not updated. One of the points to make out there is Rachel Zegler, as it will be clear, is supposedly a Latina actress, which I imagine may have got some controversy from some people for casting Snow White with a Latina. But that's kind of secondary to the main focus here. So he said, I was a little bit taken aback when they were very proud to cast the Latina actress as Snow White. You're still telling the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Take a step back and look at what you're doing here. It makes no sense to me. You're progressive in one day or way, and you're still making that effing backwards story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. What the eff are you doing, man? Have I done nothing to advance the cause from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. <laughs> it's not big enough. <laughs> yeah, the, the soapbox, you need a few more stacked on there, mate. Uh, he walked into that one. That's, that's yeah, his fault. I mean, obvious. I mean, come on. But, Peter, it's just a reminder here that your job is that of an actor. You do not have any opinions outside of how to act that I care about. So maybe stick to your job, mate. Also, what a weird complaint that the, the Snow White is played by a Latina and that's progressive, but the dwarves being played by dwarfs isn't progressives. Because, of course, you could argue that Snow White should be whiter than white. Do they white need to be multi ethnic dwarves? But no, we're going to have tall people as the dwarves and like a, a short Latina as the Snow White. And then that would be fine in Peak Ladiglinch's worldview. Well, I don't know what he wants, basically. He's just sort of complaining about complete it. because, sk- like, It's complete skin suit is what I'm getting at. Like, oh, once yeah, you change yeah. every aspect of the thing, it's okay. Yeah, well, he says here, if you tell the story of Snow White with the most effed up progressive spin on it, let's do it all in. I mean, what are you, what are you going for there? Unless you're saying that progressive spins F everything up, I'll, I'll agree with you there, Peter, but I don't understand what you want. Do you want Zack Snyder directing Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Do you want Snow White and the Grey Dwarves like in the Grey scale like murdering one another? Is that what you're asking for? I don't know. But Disney responded to the actor's comments in a statement to The Hollywood Reporter saying the film intends to take a different approach with these seven characters in order to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film. The company added that they have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community during the film's lengthy development period. So there's no confirmation, but we kind of know what this sort of uh, talk means, which is to avoid any kind of backlash, we're probably just going to change it completely and axe whatever plans we had. Presumably. Yeah, presumably. I I, I love that language. You know how broad it sounds? Like we've been consulting members of the dwarfism community. You know how that means nothing? Tell me specifically, what have you done? Who have you texted? (laughs) <laughs> like, Peter. Because that, that's what you've done. You've texted Peter Dinklage. Yeah, should we do it? No. Okay, good one, <laughs> man. Thanks. But yeah, it seems like Dinklage is kind of reaching here. Um, and the dwarves in the story, if anybody's familiar with it, they don't live in a cave. They live in a hut. And they're very competent miners. 
They all live in like a little cottage together. They're all miners, as is shown a lot of the time in fancy dwarf things. They're all very competent. I don't think you're dehumanizing anybody. It sounds like me and the boys. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> me and the boys mining in the cottage. Yeah. Uh, and also, the, you know, there's loads of different um, points of reference for fantasy dwarves. You've got Lord of the Rings, where once again, they're very skilled and competent miners. They like hollow out a mountain and build a city in it. And Witcher 3, you've played Witcher 3, right? Uh, I only think for a little bit. I oh, well, the dwarves in there are all skilled blacksmiths. So throughout fantasy, yeah, there may be lots of like weird little fantasy creatures, but the dwarves are generally shown as being a bit grumpy, but generally good-hearted people who are skilled at whatever they take Unlike for. Unlike Peter Dinklage, who was never grumpy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but let's remind ourselves of some of the other roles that Peter Dinklage has taken. Uh, many of you will be familiar with Elf, the, for some reason, beloved Christmas film starring Will Ferrell as a human who's mistaken for an elf, who at one point goes to New York to visit his, uh, his real-life brother, at which point he meets Peter Dinklage. Are you familiar with this? I can't remember what happens. Well, Peter Dinklage is a high-powered businessman who shows up at one point, and because he's a dwarf, uh, Will Ferrell sees him and mistakes him for another elf from Santa's Grotto. And that is the joke. He gets very angry about it because he thinks that he is a real dwarf. Not very dignified. Is that the whole part? That's the whole part, as far as I can remember it. That's what Peter Dinklage signed up for. Yes. Okay. Okay. And let's not also forget, even worse here, if we move, Tiptoes. Are you aware of this film? No idea. Uh, I've never watched it, but I desperately want to because it's a film wherein Gary Oldman plays a dwarf by standing on his knees and putting shoes where his knees are. And Peter Dinklage stands <laughs> al acts alongside him. <laughs> what? Yes, they decided we need a dwarf. I know. Let's get Gary Oldman. Oh yeah, it sounds like something Cole Pilkington would come up for a film idea. They're like, well, we need a dwarf. Well, he's not a dwarf. We'll put shoes on him. <laughs> put shoes on his knees. Jobs are good and simple ass. <laughs> What's your problem? Yeah, uh, so it's very, very strange that Peter would get so offended nowadays when in the past he... I, I understand at the time he was in a sp he was kind of yep. coming up through the ranks. You've got to take some roles that come to you, but at the same step time... step ladder down. Yeah, 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 man. But now you do seem to be pulling the step ladder up from behind you, uh, as, it, as it seems, because... Uh, Oh yeah. Sorry, it's it's also because I remember when um again I'm gonna mention Carl Pilkington went to China and he called up uh I can't Warwick remember. Davis. Warwick Davis said, Oh, is it all right the, the dwarf kingdom here? Like <laughs> it was an obvious point that well no, it's it's not run properly, the people here are doing it for expectation reasons. The guy's starring in a Hollywood movie with Disney. I don't really feel like they're being made to do it. Well, that's I think they're probably we'll pretty to. happy to do it. That's the point that we will get to. Of course, you do have companies like the independent publications like the independent uh, supporting peter dinklage's position saying yes it is effing backwards house of mouse is reportedly moving ahead with an adaptation of the one that got it started snow white and the seven dwarves and i guess we shouldn't be all that surprised given hollywood's long and continuing record of ableism that with dollar signs floating before movie executives eyes it seems to have missed the problem what do you want? Like, if NBA players are starred as the dwarfs, would they be happy? Because they can still be called dwarfs. <laughs> LeBron but still... James as grumpy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as politically uninformed. Mm. Um, even if the live-action remake of Snow White is different, and about that I have my doubts, it will inevitably draw attention to the original, which is regarded as a classic and plays an important part in motion picture history, but depicts the Seven Dwarfs as childlike, argumentative, and incapable of properly looking after themselves. Does it? No, it doesn't. They were getting on just fine before this dozy woman showed up and started causing problems for them. <laughs> they were, me and the boys were getting on just fine. And then a woman got involved. <laughs> yep. Oh, and don't even get me started on the problem of calling a character dopey, which, to uh, which today looks like a rather cruel mockery of people with learning disabilities. No, it doesn't. No. No, it doesn't. He's a bit dopey. I mean, we all know that guy like, who's a bit dopey. It doesn't it feel like he's kind of grasping at straws? Like, how can I write an article and get paid today for writing crap? I've I mean, got a great idea. That's what it, I mean. To, I mean, as we mentioned, he could go for the idea that maybe it's a misogynistic movie now because yeah, me and the boys were fine, and then the woman <laughs> turned up. And you could, you could equally, by that sort of level of logic, you could make the argument that he was called dopey because he was so doped up the whole time or something like I mean, come on, you're obviously <laughs> grasping right here. Yeah. It would actually be, have been perfectly possible for Disney to update the film by removing the ableism and making Snow White and, I don't know, the Band of Thieves. There is precedent, 
So just take away those jobs for the dwarf actors. Great, good idea. I know how we can stop ableism. Removing opportunities yeah. you for know, people with disabilities. There's loads of other roles that they can get in the acting world for someone who's a dwarf. Yeah, they can star as um, uh, the big friendly giant. Yeah. Maybe. Um. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but if you are a dwarf in acting, one of the easiest jobs is playing a dwarf. I mean, as you can see with Peter Dinklage or what's his name? Like playing someone who's Warwick short. Davis played as... Yeah, uh, Warwick as, Davis. He's like, I think he got his start in Star Wars, dressing up as a little bear. Exactly. Like, it's it's not a bad gig. Yeah, and you're getting paid it's all for it. It's all consensual. You're doing good. Studio's doing good. There's no mistreatment going on. There's no problem. Yeah, I mean... Uh, but yeah, and they, they, they carry on. But how about instead Disney puts its vast resources into a few more original stories, which has proven time and time again it can successfully produce. Like this year's excellent Encanto, which features a cast of Latino actors, because that's all we really care about. Uh, no, no height representation over here, only skin colour, thank you very much. There are the giants. <laughs> or last year's Raya and the Last Dragon. I mean, if they make more of those, that's great. I would love to see more opportunities for Lindsay Ellis to get cancelled by our own audience, so please go ahead and do that. Uh, or perhaps something daring features a featuring actors with disabilities in roles where they're not being portrayed abusively. The problem with suggesting something like that, of course, is that whether or not they're being portrayed abusively, you're going to find a way to try and spin it. No, the, no one's ever going to be happy, and people are just going to try and stay away from these kinds of stories just in case it gets this sort of response from some self-righteous knobhead like Peter Dinklage. I mean, that's all that's going to happen. Uh, so if we move along, uh, we can see that there has been a bit of an outcry from the dwarf actor community, including Hornswoggle. Are you aware of Hornswoggle? No. Uh, he was a WWE act, um, I mean wrestler, uh, definitely not an actor. It's all real. Okay. <laughs> uh, who portrayed the character of Hornswoggle, who was a little Irish leprechaun. So... He knew what gigs he could get hold of, and he just went straight for it. And he spoke to Tucker Carlson about this whole situation, which is great. I would, I, I need to actually watch the interview, but they, they talk about it here on the Fox News website. So actor and professional wrestler Dylan Hornswoggle Post, uh, Postal called out Peter Dinklage uh, on Tucker Carlson tonight. He wants to be progressive. And it's all about progression, and I support that completely. But the issue is him being progressive is eliminating seven potential dream jobs from the dwarf acting community. Hornswoggle, who was a WWE superstar for 10 years, said that he was able to live his dream as a pro wrestler because the industry was specifically seeking out a little person such as himself. He added that Disney's li uh, new live-action film would enable seven other dwarf actors to live their dreams as well. These are seven roles that are few and far between for dwarves anyway. They were made for us, and that's what's ridiculous to me about the whole situation. It's not being progressive. You're hurting the community by what yeah. you're doing. Uh, Great point. I love his point. They're made for us. Who else is going to play the dwarf in the dwarf movie? Gary Oldman, presumably. We're, we're going to get them to go down on the knees and put shoes there instead. Is yeah, that... you could get Gary Oldman, I don't know, Johnny Depp, you know. You know, which is the better solution here? Well, like, we just cast dwarves. You know, they're kind of, as he says, made for us. I was like, well, yeah. I mean, you are the purpose-built person for that role, if the character is meant to be a dwarf. Well, Peter Dinklage sees it as beneath him, ironically. <laughs> So therefore, nobody how, can get how, it. How many one now? Five jokes about his height? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, perhaps. Uh, and they made some more comments on some other ones. They went on to uh, this morning, and they were asked if Dinklage was hypocritical in his stance. And uh, there was another one called Chun Tan. And Tan responded, it is hypocritical. I think it's really selfish of him, because he's made it now, and he's taking the opportunity to take... Um, oh, he's taking the opportunity away from other people that have dwarfism. He's taking dream roles away that were set in stone for dwarf actors. As you say, they're literally made for the role. Actors that dream of being in a Disney film. Because as we know, Disney, they don't do things on a small scale, especially with readaptations like this. This is going to be a huge, huge film. And probably, for these guys, a huge paycheck. Yeah, but also the start of a big career. Yeah, it could be a good opportunity for up-and-coming dwarf actors who don't get the opportunity like this to come up very often. Dinklage himself struggled for like... 15 years before he got Game of Thrones, which obviously skyrocketed his, his career. And now what's he doing? He's just removing those opportunities for other people. Because yeah. if people want roles and the character isn't a dwarf, well, they're not going to hire a dwarf to do it. Because they're like, well, no, I want the character not to be a dwarf. But then if you've got positions that are openly available where the character is a dwarf, it's a golden ticket. Yeah, but with this sort of backlash, they're just going to go, well, I don't want to do it right. just in case Peter Dinklage has something to say about we'll it. Have the NBA do it instead. Like. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and But he makes a point here, like you say, I can't be Superman or Spider-Man or Captain America. I can I can be one of the seven dwarves. As a dwarf actor and a part of the dwarf, actor, uh, dwarf community, this is made for me. So clearly, Peter Dinklage's approach to this situation has been somewhat short-sighted. <laughs> That was a six. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, all I can say that he really should have been the bigger man and taken the high road. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this interview between James O'Keefe and Carl. I'm sick of whining, is this clip. And if you want to follow James O'Keefe on Getter, you can at, at James O'Keefe uh, to keep up with everything he does on there. But otherwise, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>